and they were saying it was okay because it was fish. And I didn't totally understand what that meant. And I was a lying vegetarian, lying person. So I would all of a sudden get turkey sausage and turkey this. Well, at least I'm not eating red meat. Uh, you hear that all the time. Oh, I don't eat red meat. I only eat chicken and fish. And I go, that's too bad for the chicken and the fish. <laughs> In that same process, um, I started working. Uh, this is a, this is why this is amazing. Why this is a compassionate journey. So I was on. The, I had this late night talk show on BET. Um, in 19, 2001. And so this guy, this designer, since I was coming on TV all the time, wanted me to wear his leather pants. So these leather pants didn't have seam. They went straight down. They were, they were sweet. He was like, wow, man, look how, and it looked like I was a damn cow because I'm long as bigger. And so my friend, Greg Gorman, great photographer, says, hey, I'm having this party with Peter and Pamela Anderson gonna be there. Now, Greg, is gay. So when he said he's having a dinner with Peter, I'm thinking Peter. This boy, I don't, I'm not thinking Peter. Right? So I'm thinking, you know, I don't care. You kick it with Peter, I'm getting Pam Anderson. After the video, I gotta get Pam Anyway, so um, that joke. Did. See, I gotta test the audience. They asked me. I gotta test the temper of the joke. So I think I'm gonna be shocked. Because I'm hanging around two of my best gay friends, I'm going to wear these leather pants. I'm not saying leather pants are gay, but now, thinking about it, um, <laughs> very effeminate at that time. And I see this turkey, and it's in a cage, this huge turkey. And I go, what, what's the turkey doing here? Oh. And he goes, oh, it's a, it's a rescue uh, turkey. It's, we're going to eat vegan food, and we're here with PETA. And I go, what's PETA? So then they tell me, and I said, man, these fake leather pants are nice. I said, boy, look at this pleather. I got them. In, this is pleather. After, after that, I swear this is a true story. I'm not lying. After I, I go in and I, I meet the chef, she owns a restaurant called Native Foods in Westwood. And I eat the food, and I'm, I'm blown away. And I still got on the pants. No one said anything to me. Um, <laughs> thank God. And, uh, and so I started changing my life right around then. It came to like 2005, um, 2006, this girl kept saying, you have to stop telling everybody you're a vegetarian. That you have to stop. And I go, why? He goes, well, on Thanksgiving, you get fried turkey. And then you I said, oh, certain days. He goes, you're not a vegetarian and you're aiding and abetting the murder of 56 billion land animals. So just stay on that side with the carnivores. Stop saying you're over here trying to be cool. So I took that as a, as a dare and a threat, and I said, oh, I'm on the cool side. So this is, just to let y'all know, you guys are on the cool side. So if you ever was a nerd, you're not a nerd anymore, you're on the cool side. <laughs> So I, uh, I stopped eating all that flesh. I did a, I did a, literally, and I call it that. That's, I think that's what everyone, I'm not saying you should, but when I was with Gene, I said, we should just change the word. If you eat any byproducts of an animal, you're a carnivore. If you eat anything that animals would eat, like we just saw the turkeys eating all that food, look how healthy they are, you're a vegetarian. Because the vegan, the, the omni this, and the, the pest of this, I didn't get it. Plus, you know, I'm, I'm from Brooklyn, you just tell me. You want to fight me, you don't want to fight me. I don't want to So in that process, I sat there and I said, I'm going to literally stick to being true to myself. I'm not going to lie to myself. And if all of a sudden, once in a while I'm hungry and I couldn't find something to eat, so I ate a slice of pizza, but that's okay. I'll be lying to myself. So I don't really worry about lying to anybody else. And my friend Shannon's with me. I said, all you have to do is concentrate on what you do. If you possibly be the best human you can be, you will be the best human you can be. You don't have to sit around and use excuses and point to what your mama used to do, your grandmama, your uncle, your father, somebody else's help. None. You don't have to do that. You can just be true to yourself and say, I don't want to destroy any kind of life. I, I used to be arachnophobic until I became really a vegan. So last night I'm staying in the cabin and you know we're on a farm and there's spiders. I used to be afraid of small people and spiders. They used to call them midgets so I didn't want to offend anybody. 
But if a midget was carrying a spider, I would, I would lose my mind. So, <laughs> this is true. That, you know, I had fears, and I started realizing where these fears were based on, where they were coming from. It was a guy in first grade, he was like the meanest little guy I've ever met. He was mean. He beat everybody up except me, but I was afraid of him. I was thinking everybody was like that. And then I just had this dream about spiders after seeing James Bond. And you know, it was one, he was in the Caribbean. You remember that one, he was in the Caribbean and the spider was coming. I don't know why, I was in Brooklyn, I wasn't in the Caribbean, it wasn't gonna happen to me, but I was afraid of it. Then when I started becoming compassionate about all animals and all people and all life, I no longer was afraid of anything that had life. So last night, I said hello to the spider in the shower. I stayed on this side of the shower, though, Gene. I asked him if he wanted any soap. He said, no. I said, I'm going to stay over here. You stay over there. You know, I'm not afraid of you, but you ain't got to be crawling on a brother. Uh, that was Ebonics for y'all that didn't get it. Uh, So I also, and it was funny because uh, Bonnie Jill, who interviewed me, is a friend of mine for a long time. She was naked for Peter. Peter, if y'all didn't see it, she goes, I'd rather go naked for Peter. You got to see the picture. If you look to the side, you can see all the good. Yeah. And so I was like, man, Bonnie, she said, do you like hanging out, just a few minutes, do you like hanging out with the farm sanctuary people or the Peter? Now, of course, she's a, she's a sports fan, so you got to take one side or the other. And so I was like, nah, you know, they all work really good job. They all do what they really need to do. But after meeting Gene in New York and hanging out with him, I just really like the cool mentality and seeing that, you know what, you know it's really hard to change the mentality of people. It's, it's just going to be. But if you can change yourself and do what you can do on this side, trust me, that's the move. And yin and yang is going to be dark and it's going to be light. Right. Just be as far on the best side or the cool side as possible. So back to what I was saying, I said, this situation when I told Gene, I said, I'm not gonna yell and argue. I'm just gonna like stay sexy and be funny. <laughs> I know you guys didn't notice I was sexy. Um, and, I, and I said, I said, I'm just gonna stay on that side, I'm gonna keep pushing at that side. And as opposed to saying somebody and explaining and making them watch the videos, the only movie. I really promote that I think you should watch, and he's here. Here's my man Dennis, in case they put together a great movie called Bold Native that Gene hasn't seen yet, but he's going to see this week. This will change the mentality in the eyes of everybody who ever thinks you need protein from eating cow. Yeah. It will. It's going to change the mentality. Yeah. So I think you should see Bold Native. I'm not a part of the movie, except I'm just a walking billboard for it. With the mentality I was getting to. I think if we change some of the ways we say things and some of the ways we do things, and think about it, the coolest things and the best styles have been when people follow. Like if a whole crowd is looking this way and they're happy, everybody will start wondering what it's like to be happy. I used to be a Jehovah Witness when I was growing up. I'm sorry. So <laughs> I don't mean to knock on your door. I'm about to, I'm about to sell a watch out awake now. But one of the things was, I was, because of that, I can take no with no problem. I can take you slamming the door and calling me names with no problem. I can be chased by dogs with no problem. <laughs> because the next day, we're going to be knocking on another door. Yeah. And we're going to be going forward. And if they don't get to it, they go, well, can I leave you some literature? And they go, no, it's like, okay. As soon as you close the door, we leave the literature. <laughs> because they believe that you don't really know what the truth is. And we're going to help you get to the truth. And it's always... You know, if you're doing something for the same same way and you think that's the way everybody has done it, then guess what? You leave something, they see it. You see something else, they pay attention. All of a sudden, you start chipping away at them. You know how your wives do your husbands when you want something. Just chip away. <laughs> They'll give in sooner or later. Or sooner than later if you go in the other bedroom. Uh, <laughs> Inside joke. A lot of people were like, <laughs> back to my compassion. <laughs> I think about this as well. I think when I'm around, I, I went around some of my ex teammates the other day, and uh, uh, I used to play with the Detroit Pistons. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I can't believe those kids are making more money in, in signing bonuses than I made in my career. I can't even go left, but that's a whole nother story. Don't get me going with these Neanderthals. And, um, so I go there and I see a couple of these cats, and one guy is Tracy McGrady, who was like 34.